In this video, we will discuss about the tag feature that Blue Prism offers in its work queues. A tag is basically a label or a keyword that you can assign to an item in the work queue in order to group or categorize the items. This will be helpful primarily in two different ways. One, you can use these tags to filter the items while getting the items from the queue for processing. Two, you can get a report of the work queue items with a specific tag. So let's see an example. Let's redesign our currency conversion process so that whenever the items are added into the queue, the from currency of the item is assigned as a tag. What I mean is, um, let me open the Excel file. Okay, here when we add these items into the queue, we want to add a tag for each of the item and the tag should be this from currency. So for the first item, the tag will be USD, the second item it will be AD and so on. Now let's see how to do that. If we open the add to queue stage, we can see an input called tags. If we set a value here, it will be assigned as a tag for the item when it is added into the queue. Now we have this input collection which holds the data that need to be added into the queue and the column named currency has the from currency information which we want to use as a tag. So we will specify that field by typing input collection dot currency. As you know, this is how you represent the field in the collection. I'll click OK and click Go. OK, so we have reached the breakpoint. I will click Reset. And if we go to the queue, you can see that the items are added and they also have the tags. But they are all USD. If you remember on the workbook, they were all different. Like we had GBP, AED, CAD, but here it's all appearing as USD. This is because the tags input field in the add to queue collection is simply a text input and it will not take the entire collection. So when we mentioned input collection dot currency, it just took the currency of the first row in that collection, which is USD. So let's see what we can do to make sure that each item has its own from currency as its tag. I will delete this and click OK. Then I will create a page and name it as add to queue and click OK. Now in this page we will create a workflow to add the items to the queue one by one instead of adding all of them together so that we can tag each item with its from currency while it is added to the queue. After that, we will replace this add to queue action stage with the page stage that refers to this add to queue page. Okay, so let's go to the add to queue page and I will first drag and drop a collection, double click, name it as single row, and I will create the four fields exactly as in the input collection. Then I will select this checkbox which says single row and if we go to the initial values tab you can see a blank row is created automatically. I'll tell you why I did this in a moment. For now I'll just click OK. Then I will drag and drop a loop stage and we want to use this to loop the input collection which we have on the main page and then use a multi calc stage to copy each field of a single row of the input collection to this new single row collection. And then we will use the add to queue action stage to add one single row into the queue. So I will go to the main page, double click input collection, uncheck hide from other pages in the process and click OK. Then go back to the add to queue stage, double click the loop start, select input collection and click OK. Then we will drag and drop a multi calc stage, double click name it as input to single row. Then we will use this multi calc stage to pick the value from each field of the input collection and store it in the corresponding field of the new single row collection. So I will type input collection dot s number and store it in single row dot s number. Similarly I will create the rest of the three fields.
Now you would have realized why I created the single row collection as a defined collection and I checked the single row checkbox. It is because if I, if I would have left it as undefined, then when this multi-calc stage tries to store the data in these four fields, Blue Prism would have thrown an exception because these fields don't even exist unless we define them. The reason why I selected the single row checkbox is because when you select that, a blank row is automatically created so that these values can be stored into the row. Otherwise, we should manually add a blank row by clicking the add row button under the initial values tab of the collection. So that's the reason why I created it as a defined collection and enabled the single row checkbox. All right, so I will click OK. Next, we will add an action stage. Double click. I'll name it as add to queue. Select the business object work queues and the action add to queue. I'll enter the queue name, which is currency queue. For the data, we will drag and drop the single row collection. And in the tags, we will drag and drop single row dot currency. Now when this item is added to the queue, its corresponding from currency will also be added. I'll then click OK. And we will link these stages. Now let's go back to the main page. Delete the add to queue stage. Drag and drop a page stage. Select create a reference to an existing page and click next. Select add to queue and click finish. And then we will link the stages. Now let's step through the process and see what happens. I will save the process. Clear the queue. And click go. Okay, it reached the breakpoint and if we go to the queue, you can see the items are added successfully and also their corresponding from currency are added as their tags. Okay, now that we have the tags, let's see what we can do with these tags. I'll go back to the process and if we open the get next item stage, you can see an input field called tag filter. As the name says, you can use this field to filter the items from the queue using the tags. For example, if I say plus GBP within double quotes. It'll take only the items with GBP as the tag. So let's try this. I will click OK and go. All right, it reached the breakpoint. Now if I step and if I go to the queue data collection, you can see that the item number three is picked instead of one and two because item number three is the first item with GBP as a tag. I'll click go to let it complete the process for this item. And it reached the breakpoint again. I'll step the stage and if I open the queue data, you can see item number four is picked because that also has GBP as a tag. I'll again click go to continue the process and the breakpoint reached. Now if I step again, you can see the queue data is empty. That is because if we look at the queue, we no more have items with GBP as a tag. So if we step again, it's going to take the no path and proceed further. But we are not going to do that right now as the further process is not designed to handle this. We can specify the tag filter in different ways. Let's say if you want to filter all the items except USD, you can simply type minus USD and this will pick all the items except USD. If you want to exclude one more tag, let's say CAD, we can add it after a semicolon like this. But make sure both are in double quotes. So let's see how it works. I will click OK and go back to the queue. Delete all the items. Reset the process. I will remove both these breakpoints and set a new breakpoint on this get deferred items count stage. Then I'll click go.
Okay, it reached the breakpoint, and if we go to the queue, you can see that except these two items which have CAD and USD as the tags, all other items are processed. So this is how you basically use a tag and a tag filter. You might be wondering why we should really add a tag. Why can't we simply use a decision stage after this get next item to check if the from currency is either USD or GBP? Yes, you can do that in this particular scenario, but think about it. If you have few more places in this process where you want to check the from currency, every time the item as has to be retrieved from the queue and it has to be checked. Instead, if we use a tag filter, it will pick up only those items with the tag and that way a lot of time is saved from checking each item. You might also be wondering why we should add items with USD and CAD into the queue in the first place if we don't intend to process them. Well, again, this is just an example. There will be a lot of other scenarios which may require you to add items to the queue but then process them differently according to the tags. For example, in this process, let's say we want some currencies to be processed at 10 a.m. and some other currencies to be processed at 11 a.m., then using tags will be an efficient way to accomplish it. All right, so I hope by now you have a good understanding of tag and tag filter. Go ahead and try various use cases and see how they work. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.